Like uh, yesterday, I was riding this motorcycle up to the fuel station, and I did the one of the biggest mistakes of the century: the electronic package and everything. Uh, like supports you so much that you feel so comfortable riding this motorcycle on high speeds. There we have an open road. What's up, YouTube? Today we have the Aprilia RS V4 RR, one of the most ferocious bike I've ever ridden in my life. I picked it up day before yesterday, and I was riding it uh, on highways, on cities. And today I thought that I'll just come out and make a video on this. So first of all, this is not a ride review or anything. This is just a first ride to talk about how I feel about this motorcycle. And I have seen very less videos in YouTube about this motorcycle. It's such a beauty. This is the 2019 version of Aprilia RSP4 RR. Basically, it's a later class that needs 999 cc. Just an ultra beast. So much happy to ride this motorcycle. The one another V4 experience which I had is the Panigale V4. Yes, of course, we have only two V4s now. The Panigale V4 and the RSP4. This one just made me to fall in love with the V4 configuration. Now, the Panigale is like too scary for me this is also scary but panigale always make you scary but this one is like feels home pretty quickly i'm so much impressed with the motorcycle so let's look around first the headlight what a beautiful motorcycle i would say that this headlight is so much powerful as well being a race motorcycle this headlight is so powerful as well but i was riding it almost pitch dark some time ago by the way it's a cold morning it's all foggy very nice to see this kind of a morning so yes it was pitch dark and the illumination was really really good and these are like ram air intakes of the motorcycle there you'll see a little bit of carbon fiber basically the thread mudguard is made of carbon fiber and coming on to the section you see that just a beautiful looking rsp4 there you'll see the 999 cc engine which is in a very mad configuration the v4 yes i've ridden the cross planes the flat planes but this one is just wow and here we'll see an integrated indicator over the mirrors which also looks nice yeah coming onto the side the chassis is actually pretty much exposed you see that actually this is my friend's bike so he has put his instagram handle over there so let's looking around see the seat the seat is actually much comfortable than i thought because it's a race motorcycle uh, comfortable in the sense it's not so cushioned and all but still it's roomy and designed in a way that some butt has to go in there and yeah of course how can i avoid the aero exhaust on this motorcycle basically this one is not a full system exhaust but you can even call it as a full system exhaust this one has a connected n can and the catalytic converter so when you connect the exhaust even if you want to connect a slip on you have the headers over there and the direct pipe to the exhaust so that means it's kind of a full system now and the tail section oh man italians are too good in making the back so good look at that motorcycle so let's get on the motorcycle so only one problem with me is that it's too tall for my height of course i have seen this with the panigale v4 as well it's quite tall motorcycle and the racing stance is you can see that this is my normal riding stance I have to put a lot of lean angle to grab onto the handlebar so on the clip on you'll see a lot of things before that let's just turn on this beautiful dial first itself you can see the lean angle sensor over there it's still working now even without turning on you can see that and uh, you can see the amount of throttling there and amount of braking so that means it's all prepped for a racetrack and on this one you have a pit switch which is like a pit mode on the handlebar actually here you we have the uh, high beam and the low beam and those stuff and the uh, indicators on we have the cruise control buttons here and the joystick navigation here here we have one switch to navigate through this thing itself so basically there is a traction control switch over down there the plus here and the minus there so it has around eight levels of traction control and the plus is over here and the minus is here so it is highly likely that you might <laughs> confuse with the horn button and you keep pressing the traction control so that's a little annoying thing since in india we use the horn for safety purposes and on this side we have a pretty unconventional way of kill switch so if you see over here the button is actually pushed inside means it is off now it is on and here we have the kill switch and this is the same button which we use for more changes so let me just put on to the race mode now we have to turn on the bike to change the riding mode so let's turn it on by the way this motorcycle has only three riding modes sport race and track there is no rain such thing for aprilia i think in italy it doesn't rain damn sounds so good by the way this aero exhaust has a custom db otherwise these tremors would have heard at least two kilometers away let me just put on to the race mode yeah it's in race mode now it's a little taller motorcycle so that's why i'm being cautious about it 
Yeah, let's launch it. This thing is freaking fast. I mean, beating any power band, <laughs> lower than speeders, on top of the RPM. Everywhere it has got more than enough of power. So basically, this motorcycle is the 2019 version of the RSB4 RR. The motorcycle gives you a lot of adrenaline. So this one has around 202 bhp and around 150 ish newton meters of torque. The piece. This will definitely give you adrenaline rush. And as I mentioned, this motorcycle comes with three riding modes, sport, race and track, which has the full power in all riding mode. On the sport mode, you have a little more mellow throttle control, but you have the full power and uh, the wheelie control, the traction control, uh, the cornering ABS, everything actually is onto a softer side. That means uh, the intervention is more, it will help you to ride inside the city. Towards the race mode, actually, this motorcycle has a little more sharper throttle, again with the same power. And the intervention of the wheelie control, uh, traction control, ABS, everything is less. And on the track mode, it's full and prepped for the track use. So yeah, this is a proper race bike, you can feel that. So if I had to talk about the riding ergonomics, the lean angle is too much, I can feel that. But if you ask me to rate in between all the other motorcycles which I've ridden in terms of riding ergonomics and comfort, I'll say that I, I'll keep this motorcycle between the S1000RR and the R1. So this is not as committed and as aggressive in the riding posture as like the R1. Neither too comfortable like this one does an ARA. This one does an ARA, even though it's a super sport motorcycle, that one sometimes feels like a touring motorcycle, like a super sport touring motorcycle. And also, this motorcycle comes with up and down, quick shift front auto blipper that makes things much easier. You can concentrate on the road, never have to mind about using the clutch and all. Oh, that growling. That's addictive. And you know one thing. This is my second experience with the V4 engine. Uh, previously, I've ridden the Panigale V4 where I feel that I was more scared to ride the motorcycle even when I was riding for the second time or the third time. But on this one, I was feeling much comfortable, feeling much home as soon as I get on the motorcycle. The height is the only thing on the motorcycle. So if you get to buy this motorcycle, be it in the fresh market or in the used market, only one thing is you might be a little scared about the height. Well, you know, this will make you comfortable so easily. The electronic package and everything like supports you so much that you feel so comfortable riding this motorcycle on high speeds there we have an open road that's a gp bike feel this motorcycle will give you a feel that 150 kilometer is almost like the cruising speed on the highway because it pulls crazily even if you have to put it on the 6 gear, it's unlike the inline 4 and all. You cannot really shift uh, gears in the 60s or the 70s. You have to really clock the 3 digit to comfortably shift each gear. I think I have never shifted to the 6 gear comfortably until now. Because I'm damn sure that this will cross uh, 250 km or something by the time I do that. Oh, the exhaust crackles, man. It's so addictive. I totally understand that why these V4 guys don't like inline fours because inline four you get the power and everything on the top rev band it's over there you have to ring it loud but on this one you get it instantly by the way if you are not able with the models in the Aprilia lineup uh, the Aprilia has 600cc uh, RS as well as the two owner version so the rs is like the sportier version of the motorcycle like the sports motorcycle for the track and two owner you want to call it as a street naked motorcycle or a touring motorcycle whatever you want but still that also makes to be a very good track motorcycle if you wish to take it over there i don't want to start a debate over there but still i'm saying that and uh, leaving the 660s over there comes to the leader class like this we have the 999cc rsv4 and the factory which is 1100cc on this one we get a shack suspension in the front and the rear but on the factory you'll get an uh, all-in suspension and 
also we have the 210 in the Lita class as well. So that's all the models that you have in, in the Aprilia lineup. Oh, and honestly, this is my first true Aprilia experience. And yeah, when this motorcycle was on sale in 2019, it was around 26 lakhs uh, out of the bank. And it's worth a buy if you are looking for a totally prepped race motorcycle. Because the suspension, I can feel that it's on to a tighter side. The feedback from the brake is excellent. I would completely agree to the fact that the front brake is just enough to tie and bring down this motorcycle. Like uh, yesterday, I was riding this motorcycle to the fuel station and I did the one of the biggest mistakes of the century. I was wearing shorts and uh, this motorcycle actually cooked me up. Uh, just for a small ride. It heats up really bad. And what you see in the dial is now something like 82 degree, which is much, much, much cooler uh, for this motorcycle. So you'll start facing the heat once it crosses the 95 degree mark and it can go up to 115 or 120 but until 95 you won't face anything but if you are wearing a shorts like me to the fuel station you get prepared to get baked especially your right thigh will get baked faster than the left thigh not really meant for our indian ride conditions like the road condition but definitely it's much better than the panigale before that's why i believe to give a head on comparison i'll say that the panigale actually heats a little more and it takes a little more time to heat and it takes a little more time to come but on this one it heats up quickly but it comes down quickly so when you get an open road uh, the motorcycle actually come down to much comfortable temperature and the riding ergonomics is also much comfortable I i'm actually really loving this kind of uh, riding posture as i mentioned i was pretty scared to the panigale all the time but on this one oh boy it made me home from the start itself look at that so if you are comfortable with talky motorcycles You'll be able to be comfortable with the motorcycle, but if you are a true inline line 4 fan and if you are already on a 600cc, you might get scared a little bit. <sighs> Can you feel that adrenaline? Oh boy. So I think if we have a kind of open road. Let's pull it hard once again. That's all with a small first ride impression of the Aprilia RSV4. I hope you like this video. As always, show some love in the form of likes and comments. See you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.